Hello and welcome to IS Primers. I am your faculty for General Studies, Shubhashish Singh Rehal. In today's video, we are going to cover the integrated theater commands. It deals with national security, it deals with the restructuring of the military. So this is a very, very important topic. Now recently, the Chief of Defense Staff, General Bipin Rawat, he undertook meeting with various stakeholders, including the defense chiefs, as well as the ministries of Home and Finance, National Security Council, etc. And this was about the constitution of integrated theater commands. So let us see what is integrated theater commands. Now, as you can see, the central word over here is theater. Theater is basically the zone, zone where a conflict may be expected. So as per this proposal, there will be several theaters or zones. And this would be under the charge of a three star officer. So this is, you know, if we talk in army parlance of the army, it will be a rank of lieutenant general. And likewise, it could be an officer of the Navy, uh, Navy or the Air Force. So this three star officer would be responsible for the activities that take place in the theater, in any theater. So it could be, let's say, the Andaman and Nicobar region, that could be one theater. And in that place, the entire defense responsibility will be that of this officer, three star officer. And he will be responsible for not just his service, like this person may be a general in the army, so not just army, but he will be responsible for the assets of the Air Force as well as Navy. So he will be responsible for all the three services combined in his theater. And this three star officer would be answerable to the chief of staff committee. So chief of staff committee as the name it's very clear it's basically the defense chiefs. Now this brings a new transition a new way in which the army would be army not army the defense forces would be operating. Now this means that there will be better coordination inter service coordination and cooperation it is expected as a result of the integration integrated theater command. So this is expected and this is quite different from the present scenario. In the present scenario, there have been lot of problems, including we can give the example of Kargil. So in Kargil itself, when the war was going on, there was public disagreement between the army chief as well as the Air Force chief. So both had disagreements, public disagreements, and it's believed that it compromised the operations. So now it will be under a single officer. So he will be responsible for coordinated functioning of the army, air force and navy in that region. And as a result of this Car Cargill issue, there was a re review committee that was formed, which was known as the Cargill Review Committee. So it also recommended the constitution of integrated theater command. So this is supposed to be an improvement over the existing system where in the existing system, army works independently, air force works independently, navy works independently. So sometimes there is a mismatch. Now some of the proposed integrated theater commands are as follows. One, there would be a maritime theater command. Maritime theater command that is, it is responsible for the entire maritime zone of India. East as well as West, that will be one theater. Then. Air Defense Command and lastly it will be two or three land based theater commands could be about Pakistan as well as China. So they could be different these are just proposals this is not a final thing. So this this is subject to change. Now coming to concerns. This is a proposal, this is a major change that is taking place and naturally there will be certain concerns as well as challenges. So the first one is structure of command. We are talking about, when we talk about the theater model, we are saying that, that uh, 
the various assets army air force and navy these would be responsible to one officer now this creates a question let's say there is an army general a person from the army and he has to command over air force and navy as well so there may be a issue between you know who reports to whom there may be a concern in that regard maybe there is a disagreement between the army officer and the air force or between the army here and the air force chief so ultimately the assets are of the indian air force so there may be this problem of the command structure so this needs to be clarified when this proposal goes through it needs to be clarified in very clear terms and we need to look into various models how the governments of uh, you know the defense forces of america and other countries have been dealing with this model they already have executed it so structure of command next is storage of resources with the indian shortage of resources with indian air force now this indian air force you know we all know it has been allocated 42 squadrons which is a very modest modest resource so given that india may be expected to fight a two front war you know both with pakistan as well as china simultaneously in that situation 42 is just about adequate and at present we only have 31 operational squadrons so there is a big deficit over here and cag as well as parliamentary committees have been very critical of the government with reference to the shortage now imagine if the air force is required to allocate their resources in various theaters one by one then in that case it may not be sufficient there may be shortage in fact the present time also when a operation takes place let's say we talk about the bala bala coat air strike that took place or surgical strike 2.0 so in that what happened in that the sukhois and the mirages that were there that went from you know the maharashtra the pune region and the gwalior region from there it operated till kashmir so they travel long distances because the resources are scarce it is not adequate enough to allocate to different regions or theaters so this is a major concern then the third one is inter service competition one it could be with reference to who becomes this who commands the theater so there may be a competition between air force as well as navy you know army has it's believed that army may have an advantage over here given the fact that army is the bulk of the defense forces so army may have an advantage over here in fact it is speculated that air force you know air force believes that they will be subordinated to the three star officer who will be from the army so there is a major concern about the issue of seniority and the command structure so this will create this may create more rivalry more tensions between the various services then there may be also rivalry when it comes to allocation of resources or defense budgets so in that regard also there may be certain concerns and fourth one and most evidently india's limited experience its india is in a very nascent stage when it comes to this theater command structure there is very limited experience in fact the chief of defense staff he himself says that there will be mod modest corrections from time to time so he himself acknowledges that there have to be changes it will not be a perfect system whatever is implemented then the big question is why despite the concerns the government wants to implement it in fact one of the agendas of the newly appointed chief defense staff cds this new post was to create better coordination and inter service cooperation between the three services and to create joint command or joint theater command so it is well documented not directly but it is documented so let us see one it is very obvious that there would be better inter service coordination and cooperation especially when it comes to military operations as you can see in this diagram as well in the structure you can see that it is ultimately under the command of a single officer so he'll be responsible for all the assets so there is is expected to be better coordination second 
if there is better coordination inter service coordination and cooperation it is possible to reduce the uh, manpower that was that is required at this moment reduce the manpower it is possible for instance uh, let's say each defense forces have their own hospitals also right uh, army has their own hospital air force has their own hospital navy likewise so if there is a theater approach there may be a single hospital or single medical service that is required likewise for logistics so this may this may le ultimately lead to a lean and thin defense force so we can save on the excess manpower that is utilized and again in this regard i must tell you that when we talk about the government's resources also about the manpower about 28% 28% goes in terms of salaries and allowances and the remaining 28 another 28% 28.6 to be precise goes in pensions so the government that is spending on defense of this 56% is going in the overheads you know expenditure on the manpower so very little is left for modernization of the defense forces the defense forces needs new guns new ammunition it needs uh, it needs uh, you know it needs new fighter planes so for that there is a capital expenditure but most of the expenditure is going to salaries and pension so if we can reduce that more money can go to modernization then again if there is better inter-service coordination and cooperation it is possible that there is a better approach to procurement as i said earlier also in when it comes to government procurement each service wants the maximum chunk of their of the government's budget for better resources like air force wants better resources for itself fighter planes etc army has its own this thing navy its own but if there is an integrated approach, let's say this particular theater needs so many of this planes, so many of troops, like, so they can plan better and optimize their resources. So this will be much better in terms of the expenses that the government incurs. And if there is an integrated approach to procurement, then in that case, we can order in bulk. We can order in a more rational manner and therefore command better rates. We can reduce the government expenditure by better planning of procurement as well as we can enable India's private sector and public sector. We can increase their capacity as to, you know, we can give them a long-term projection to Indian industries that please enhance your capacity of making uh, defense equipments like tanks, air force, we'll be needing so many, please do work on it. So it can give impetus to make in India initiative. And lastly, when there is better coordination, when we are looking at the theater based approach, the logistics, which, ac which accounts for a major chunk of the government's resources that can be integrated. So the cost on logistics can come down. So these are the advantages, the major advantages that the government believes would be as part of the uh, integrated theater commands. So this is all we have on this particular video and we can expect a direct question on the integrated theater commands. So stay tuned for more such videos and please do remember to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel IES Primers. Bye-bye, take care and all the best for your exams.